We can talk about Eric Ten Hag's signings all we want, but we all know that there's a lot that still needs to be done at Manchester United before we can even get to that point. And that's what I want to run through in this video. Hopefully your left ear and your right ear should be hearing this. Apologies about that yesterday. New microphone, but I think I've got it sorted today. You can let me know in the comments. But I want to run through. I've already done a list about what I think Ten Hag has to do at Manchester United to bring in success and get rid of the wrong things that exist inside this club. But in order to get to that list, I think he's got a different list, this immediate list. Let me run through this in this video with you. And if you do enjoy it by the end, please would you consider subscribing to United People's TV. It's great to see the community growing. I'm excited about the summer coming up and I'm going to cover everything here on United People's TV in as much detail as I can. So I'd love to have you on board. But if we go into numero uno on that list for Eric Ten Hag, then I think it's very straightforward and it's got nothing to do with signings. It's to do with making sure he surrounds himself with the right people at the club. Now, we know that it's Mitchell van der Gag coming in. We're waiting on the official confirmation. We know that it's Steve McLaren coming in. We're waiting on the com official confirmation. Those two are done and dusted. But there's still other conversations that Eric Ten Hag has to have. Eric Ramsey is one of them. Now, I know that's probably going to maybe split opinion, given how, let's be honest, how bad Manchester United have been from set pieces this year. It took us, what, 114 goals to score a corner? And we've conceded from a lot of set pieces poorly. But Eric Ramsey, as a young coach, apparently Ten Hag has identified him as somebody who he feels he could work with and maybe improve. And in that sense, I mean, he gained a great reputation at Chelsea before we, we thought that we made a coup when we signed Eric Ramsey from Chelsea. And then it sort of transpired that it didn't really work. Uh, but he's been touted as somebody who's going to work on one-on-one -on -one drills with players inside the training ground and on the set pieces again. Again? In the same way that I think people doubted whether Steve McLaren was the right person to bring into the club. If that's who Eric Ten Hag wants, then Ramsey is the right appointment and Ramsey should be part of the coaching staff. I don't personally think that Mike Feeden should be even a conversation that we're having. I don't think Mike Feeden should be involved in it in any way, shape or form. Mike Feeden should not be part of this coaching setup and I hope, well, I really, really hope that Manchester United shift him on. We don't need the experience of him alongside the experience of McLaren. We've already got the experience of McLaren. You don't need both. But number one on that list, I think, for Eric Ten Hag is making sure that he's got the right people alongside him. Because for a system of his that requires so much discipline, so much repetition in training, he needs people like Van der Gag, people like McLaren, people who, coaches who can really help him. He needs the right signings as well alongside that. And we'll get into that later in the video. But he needs the coaches there. That's number one. And number two on the list, Gary Neville said this, what, a couple of days ago. And it's something I really kind of do agree with. He said, he said this on Monday Night Football. He said he's got a chance to meet the players, sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and get to know them. I hope then he does go on a holiday for a couple of weeks and gets a break because obviously the job is big at United and the season is long. He absolutely does need a holiday. But that idea there that he'll meet the players, I think that will probably happen after the season ends. We played Crystal Palace on Sunday. We're going to the game, actually. Um, looking forward to it. I think we'll probably lose, but you never know. Not to be surprised. Let's see if we can end the season with a bang. But he needs to meet this squad. And before we can really truly talk about new signings, obviously work is going on behind the scenes. And again, we will talk about that. He needs to identify who he thinks he can genuinely trust inside this squad. Now, you'll remember that we've done, we've taken a look at this previously. Look at that lovely face from me there. This was the public list uh, from United fans. Like over 50,000 fans voted on Sky. And it was this list of players. To get rid of Matic, Pogba, Jones, Mata Pereira, the Glazers. Don't know why they're not number one. Martial, Cavani, Lingard, Maguire, Bay, Wamasaka, Brandon Williams, Victor Lindelof, Diogo Delo. So like, it's an insane list. It won't happen all in one summer. But he's going to have to go through and make his own assessment on this squad, right? Because Ten Hag can listen to everything that Ralph Radnick has to say. He can listen to everything that's written down. He can listen to whatever anybody else wants to say about this squad. But until he meets them, until he makes his own judgment and assessments, I don't think he can fairly do anything. If we're looking at players who are probably doubts as to whether they'll be here next season, I'll just put a little line next to them. Lee Grant, unsure. Tom Heaton, I think he'll probably stay. I'll actually take that one off. Let me go back one step. I think he'll stay there. Dean Henderson, well, it looks like he might be going Newcastle on loan. Or... Maybe as a permanent. Maybe, maybe not. Victor Lindelof, I think he'll be here. Even if United fans, as according to this list, if 47% of United fans will keep him, I think he'll be staying. Eric Bay, question mark whether he'll be here next year. Phil Jones, question mark whether he'll be here next year. Harry Maguire, there should be a question mark, but I think he'll stay for one year and then we'll probably have that conversation, even if I do think it's the wrong thing. 
I think Varane staying. I think Delo staying. I think Shaw staying. I would say there's probably a question mark against Tellez. And probably in the same way that they therefore should be of a question mark against Delo. But I don't particularly think that both of them will go. Juan Bissaka could be going back on loan to Crystal Palace. Brandon Williams, he will be... Uh, I don't know whether he might go on loan, but that's kind of a semi-relevant conversation. Not irrelevant, but not as important. And Axel Twenzebe, I don't know. I think he'll probably be sold, if I'm being completely honest. I think he's had enough loan spells now. Ted Mengi, hopefully he comes through. And Alvaro Fent. What about, what about down here? Look, Paul Popper's going to be going. Mate, you can see how much transition this squad is going through this summer. It's, every time you do this, it, it just makes you go, wow. Like, this really is the summer of all summers for United. I'm just going through here, putting names next to players that I really think there is a chance that they will not be here next year, or we already know that they won't be here next year. Who else? Nah, I reckon they'll all be. But you can see that was that two down there. And I don't think this isn't an exhaustive list. Three, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15 players down there, I would say, with uncertain futures at Manchester United. Gary Neville is completely right when he says that it's the opportunity for Eric Ten Hag to go and meet the squad, meet the players, make his own judgments and his own assessments, because ultimately that's what's most important. He can listen to the advice of Ralph Radnick, who will know more than anybody what's required. But Eric's going to have to make his own calls. And that's why I'm meeting them maybe next week before he goes on holiday. I think that's a good idea from Gary Neville, and I think that probably will happen. And then all of that has to be done before we can really talk about transfers. Because what's the point in talking about transfers if you haven't got the coaching set up sorted? What's the point in talking about transfers if you don't know what the players that you need to sign? Because by assessing this squad properly, by deciding which players are going to be there and which players aren't going to be there, you really truly know where you need to strengthen. I think you kind of already do, but it does also depend on players leaving. Now, heading over to transfers, this is a report that's come from Mike McGrath from The Telegraph this afternoon. It's caught people by surprise because Lissandro Martinez's name is on the list. Not Urian Timber, but the other centre-back at Ajax. I mean, that's going to be what? Who is it we linked to now? We've been linked to uh, Martinez, we're linked to Timber, we've linked to Anthony, we were linked to Gravenberch for Bayern Munich. I think we were linked to Masraoui as well. We're just linked to all of them. Now, I don't personally think I'd rather have Timber, but clearly Martinez is an excellent player for Eric Ten Hag, and let's not be too surprised that he's looking at them. But when we scroll down here, this is where we get a little bit more information, right? Ten Hag would ideally like a quick centre back. But other priorities include two midfielders, in particular a number six as an orchestrator to build attacks from, which was the way he played at Ajax. And you're damn right, I'm going to go down here to the soundboard and I'm going to whip that bad boy out. Because Manchester, you know, I actually know, <laughs> I haven't actually connected it. Fail, absolute fail from Sam there. But we need, that's exactly what we need this summer. If you scroll down a little bit more, in the final, the penultimate paragraph, Mark McGrath is saying there, United's recruitment team are expected to meet later this week to decide the plan for the summer. So that's, what that, so that's going to be on his to-do list as well. So not only to secure the coaching staff, not only to look at the squad and really decide, who do I want to keep? Who do I, who do I think I can trust inside this squad? And to decide on the transfer targets is the recruitment team are meeting. And remember, it's the 18th of May. Now, I know that, We've all become, no, it's not that we've become slightly impatient over the years, but United have just dithered and just dithered and just done things slowly and painfully in transfer windows that we would love and prefer for it to happen quickly and decisively. Everything done before pre-season. Like it kind of used to be under Fergie. Damn it. Oh, back to the Fergie days again. We put like a little pound in a pot, be rich by the end of the year. Um, that's what he ideally wants to do. That's why the idea there that our recruitment team is meeting next week. Because remember, ladies and gents, it's the 18th of May. The season's not even finished yet. But the fact that United are actually having these conversations now is progress in itself. And the fact there that I'm hearing all the right words from United. Two midfielders, one deeper line, number six, one ball-winning midfielder, one centre-back who's quick and playing an Ajax hard line, and one versatile forward. I'm like, that's exactly what we need. Finally, the club seems to be getting shit in check. And listening to Eric Ten Hag. And all of this has to happen before Eric Ten Hag can even think about the training ground. Can even think about, as I said, if I go back to my list that I did a while ago, talking about fitness levels, talking about bringing the mentality to the players and ending player power. That's all going to happen on the training ground, right? 
But all of this has to happen before Eric Ten Hag can put on that jacket, become the trainer that he wants to be at United. Because so much change is going to happen this summer. But I think what I've explained in this video has to be on the immediate to-do list for Eric Ten Hag for month one. But there's so much still to do. And no doubt there's going to be more inside that month than just that. If you think I've missed anything, you let me know in the comments below. Let me know in the comments as well what you think about the new microphone. I think it sounds sexy. I'm happy. It's As I said, this is you supporting the channel. It's me investing back into the channel, hopefully improving the audio. But let me know what you think. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But oh man, the Ten Hag era is getting started and I can't wait to see what happens.